forward to it. I don't believe it's going to be too terribly long. Amen. I want to read some scriptures tonight out of Psalms. Uh, Psalms chapter 11. And uh, I just want to kind of, you know, this morning I was talking about how we make decisions and decisions matter. The things that we decide to do, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's what the Lord would have us to do, and sometimes we don't. Uh, you know, the Lord doesn't override our free will, even though he'll try to get our attention, try to get us to uh, go in a certain direction or do something that he wants us to do that's for our benefit, that's good, but it doesn't mean that he's going to force us, because then we wouldn't have free will. We would be just more like robots. And so God gives us choices. So this morning I talked about the decisions that we make and how we make those decisions. And so I'm going to make the assumption that we've all decided to uh, go ahead and, and uh, make the decisions that will be in accordance to the Word of God. And so we're going to make those decisions. And now in our world that we live in here in America, what does that mean? Because most folks in America, unfortunately, are not making the same decisions we're going to make based on the Bible. Amen? So how's it going to turn out? What's it going to be like? <clears throat> and, uh, and I think it's so very important in these last days that we determine, make up our mind that we are going to uh, stand for righteousness, stand for what we believe in, no matter what the world does, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do what the Bible teaches. So if you want, let's stand and honor and reverence the reading of God's Word. I want to read just a few verses in Psalms 11. Uh, that's on page 604. 604. Uh, I do that in our chapters. We have, uh, we have all the same type of New Testament Bibles. And uh, it just makes it a lot easier to put anybody in an uh, awkward situation. You just set a page number. And uh, that way, if they don't know exactly where it's at, there it is. Amen. So uh, I try to keep that in mind, keep that habit going, so I don't forget to do that sometimes. But uh, Psalms 11, now this is where <laughs> David has uh, has been running from Saul. And... Uh, and, and so he starts this psalm out, and he says, verse 1, In the Lord put I my trust. In other words, I'm going to have faith in God when it doesn't seem to make sense. How say you to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string, 
that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. That's what they want to do. They want to shoot at us. We're upright in heart. We're trying to do what's right. And they want to take pop shots at us. Number three, verse three, it says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And that's what I want to think about, talk about a little bit tonight. What can the righteous do? Let's go to the Lord in prayer together. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you again for your goodness, your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. Lord, I thank you for those that's come back tonight. I ask you, Lord, that you would just speak to our hearts and help us, Lord, to be steadfast, putting our faith and our trust in you, Lord, knowing that you've done all that we can can be done, Lord, and we can have eternal life. We put our faith in you. We trusted you for salvation. Lord, may we have the wherewithal to trust you for everyday needs, whether it be to pay the light bill, whether it be, Lord, uh, for food, for gasoline, Lord, whatever it is, Lord, will we truly trust you every day that everything is going to be all right because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. For it's in Jesus' name I ask you. Amen. 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 You may be seated. As I said, David here, he's he's running. <clears throat> and uh, so I want to just I just want to give you some things to think about because I, I don't know about you. Somebody said something about listening to the news and all the lies this morning. And I'm telling you that's what it is. Most of the time, I don't care what channel it is. I used to try to listen to this one particular news channel that I thought would be better than the rest, and they may be just a tad better than some. But I they all in the same game. I'm telling you, it's uh it's either depressing or makes you mad. One of the two things like. So uh, I've got to where now I go for long stretches, two or three weeks. And I don't listen to it. Kind of like soap operas. You know, I can turn it on. I, I mentioned this to Nancy the other day, a while back. Uh, I was talking about how Granny would have the soap operas on when I was little. And uh, I think the St. Catherine was there a lot. Yeah, the soap operas would be on. I remember the soap operas. David Wise has been around for 147 years. And uh, I remember seeing those soap operas. I might come in and sit down and see it. And it may be, no, just, I don't know, 10, 11, 12. And I come back two or three weeks later, pick right up on whatever happened. I mean, it's like not much had happened, obviously. And that's kind of what it is with the news. It seems like they just keep repeating the same old stuff over and over and over. And, and uh, <clears throat> there's got to be some new news, and there's got to be some good news every once in a while. Amen. And I'm about ready to hear some of it. So uh, I got to where I don't listen to it every day because, I'm, like I said, I even get depressed or mad, one of the two. So, uh, but as you listen to those things, you're listening to what the newscasters are saying and what's going on in our world. Uh, from a Christian perspective, you begin to wonder, is there any hope? That's why it's so important that we stay in the Word of God, that we stay focused on Jesus and, and not what the world is doing out there and how things are going. It's kind of like I heard somebody talking about years ago when you uh, to find counterfeit dollar, dollars, what they do is they study the real thing. And if you study the real thing, as soon as you see a fake, you know it right off. And that's why it's so important that we stay in the truth and the Word of God. So when we see a lie, we know without a doubt, right off, that's a lie. We don't have to get all bent out of shape, wonder and cry, wonder what's going on. Just trust the Lord because we know that that's a lie. But these foundations are being destroyed. And just quickly, a couple of things to think about uh, the families being destroyed. <coughs> uh, in America, you know, now you can have what can be called a family is very, very loosely defined. There may be two mamas in there, two daddies in there. It, 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 I've seen some other variations of things that they call family. What I'm talking about, family, I'm talking about a man and a woman that are married and they have children and they raise them up. And then you have extended family, you have in-laws, outlaws, and you have you have, you have you have all your cousins and nieces and all that sort of stuff. But it starts with a man and a woman. Amen. And that's one of the things that's out of whack right now. It's not just the family. It's, it's the marriage itself. I mean, it, it seems to me, uh, matter of fact, I read here uh, three or four months ago some numbers, and they say that 59% of folks inside the church now have been divorced. And it's lower outside the church. But outside the church, folks aren't getting married. Matter of fact, the only people outside the church that seem to really want to get married is the homosexuals. Amen? I mean, they're the ones who want to fight for the right to get married. And so this, this is one of those things, folks, that I think we should love the center. Uh, I know a couple of uh, homos, used to be homosexual men who uh, they're, they're super great guys. They love the Lord with all their heart. But they live that lifestyle. They believe the lie. 
And then, you know, at 25, 28 years old, they get born again. And what happens whenever you meet Jesus, he changes your life. Amen? Amen. And uh, I know two men in particular I'm thinking about. Uh, one of them, I'm trying to think, Michael's got about four or five kids. And the other one I know has five. And he got married, got five kids now. Michael married, and I think he's got four. But, I mean, the life is to change, okay? So I get so tired of hearing that over and over and over that you can be changed by the power of God. Now, listen, if you're born white or you're born black or you're born wherever you're born at, you can't change that, amen? I don't change. But they try to use the same analogies to, to say this is why uh, we, we should have all these rights. Folks, we got to stand our ground. Whenever you meet people who we love people, don't get me wrong, but we don't change what the Bible says about sin. Whether it could be something else, I'm just using that because it's so, to me, it's so uh, undebatable. A man is a man, a woman's a woman. That's it. This thing that's going on with this, with this, uh, this young man uh, in all the swimming races, he ought not get nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's no reason for some for some dude that's six foot tall to be in competition with them girls. It shouldn't happen. That's ridiculous. I, I, I just I, I mean I really pondered this and read scriptures and listened to different things. I don't know how we got here, folks. I don't know how we got here where we're at. I don't understand how we can get so far away from basic truth. I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm just talking about basic natural truths. How do we get that far away? Listen, it's happening and it's going on. So these things are happening. These foundations are being destroyed. The foundations of the church are being destroyed. As you know, well know, many churches is nothing more than an entertainment center or a clubhouse. It's not the church. It's not coming. It's about worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Do I love to hear good singing? Amen. I, I love it when we have great singing. I want to worship and praise the Lord. But it's not really about how good the singing is. It's about Jesus Christ. We come here to fellowship around the things that he has done for us. Amen. Now, nothing wrong with talking about what he's done for us this past week. But I'm telling you, he, he saved my soul. He changed my life for all eternity. That's why we come together and worship him and praise him. And it's not about that. Listen, Nancy and I, you know, Mr. Trigger, I didn't really know a whole lot. Uh, we, You know, I preached at probably most all the churches in Vernon Parish and Sabine Parish and around. We started traveling and going on. I've been in churches that I, I really felt like it was awkward. I felt like I was in a ballroom instead of church. I'm talking about where you got lights up here shining here on the platform, and you got three or four people up here in flip flops and smoke about this deep up here, and it's dark out there. I mean, I can't see anything. If I wanted to read my song book, I could, but they didn't have one anyway. Amen. And it, it made me feel uncomfortable because that's the way I live as a lost man. In darkness, amen? And I didn't like it. And the people hear me and they say, well, that's just a way of our I don't care. Jesus is the light, amen? amen. Turn the lights on. Amen. I, I don't know why people want to do that in the church house, but things have changed so much. And this is why these things are being destroyed. So, so what can we do? Well, number one, I think we can take a stand. And, and when I say take a stand, I don't mean that we have to be rude and obnoxious. I just believe we're going to take a stand. And all we're going to take a stand is to have some godly convictions. Amen? You've got to know what you believe if you're going to take a stand. You've got to know who you are in Jesus Christ. I think one of the greatest problems we have inside the church, and I use that kind of loosely, but, but people who call themselves Christians do not realize who they are in Christ. Folks, there's things that we, we don't have to be down here walking around with turkeys. We can soar with the eagles. Amen? We are, we are followers of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He has overcome death, hell, and the grave. He's overcome this world. So we don't have to be bound down to this world and living in that kind of life. We can walk and praise the Lord and have a smile on our face no matter what's going on. But we also can do some things that are maybe not right with the world, but they're right with God. We've got some real convictions. God sees where we're at. He knows where we're at. You know, back in Exodus, I think it was chapter 3, when, uh, when, when Moses was wanting to help, you know, he wanted to do something. And God says, look, I see the affliction of my people. I'm going to use you to take them out. And they're going to take them out of the world. You know, Egypt was the top of the world. And I'm going to take them out of here. And so God knows where we're at. He sees where we're at. Matter of fact, he sees all. Bible talks about it somehow. He can see the dark, by the way. Amen. So he knows everything. So, by the way, he knows if you're going 
fishing on Sunday morning or you're going to church or going deer hunting, or whatever the case may be. Amen. He knows it all. He can see it all. And so this is one of those things that's so important that we have some convictions about who we are in Christ and our children, our grandchildren, I talked about this morning, need to know it's important to us. How do you show them what's important? Listen, most of y'all in here have had a job, praise God, or you've got a job. And it was important, wasn't it? You didn't just go when you felt like it. My goodness, I was working. I felt like I didn't want to work. I mean, I never just woke up. Let me tell you, what, I woke up one Monday morning, and I didn't want to go to work, and I was craving fried chicken. I said, yes, Lord, I'll preach if that's what you want me to do. Amen? And I ain't never just woke up and wanted to go to work. I just don't work on the way with me. Now I do it over and over and over. Why? Because I like to eat fried chicken. Amen. So I have to buy some every now and then. So my, my point is that if it's important, then our children and our grandchildren should know it's important because we do this. It's just like tonight on a Sunday night. How many people went to church this morning, Sunday morning, but they're sitting at home Sunday night? Amen. Their car is in their driveway. And those people that live around them never go to church, they see that. It's not really that big a deal. They go most Sunday mornings, but not all the time. Never on Sunday night or Wednesday night. I mean, Wednesday night. Y'all still have Wednesday night services here? Prayer meeting? I know a lot, of, a lot of things have changed because of what happened with COVID and whatnot. And because we used to go, when we first started traveling and going to churches, we would go Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, we would just go to a church and visit when we were, you know, trying to look for a new place to start a, a, a new chapel. And it got to where there was no weeknight services, period. There was nothing going on. Nobody was there. And uh, <clears throat> then it got to where there was nothing on Sunday night. Of course, then when COVID shut us all down, I had a 12 day tip in the Bible in my backyard. I did, so I learned how to do this stuff. I was so aggravated. All of a sudden, the government said I couldn't go to work, couldn't do nothing. That's another story. But I learned how to do some things on that computer. And all my friends, my brother Lyndon, uh, 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 Lyndon Longoria, brother Bill Britt, all of them, I called them up. What did y'all do? Nothing. Everything got this. And so I had a tent revival. Literally, I had a tent set my tent up that I was taking to the parking lot up in Louisville, the truck show. Set the tent up in my backyard. One night I had mama singing. I had different singers all over. Maggie Gill with us. And, and I, I learned how to send a belief where I could get them on there. And we had 12 days in a row, virtual tent revival. One night we had over 2,000 viewers on there just in one night. So, I, I mean, there's things that we, we need to show the world that it's important to us. Amen? That we care about these things. Matter of fact, I want y'all to turn over to Daniel. Uh, look at Daniel chapter 1. I just want you to see. This is where I think that we're going to uh, have trouble, I guess you could say. A lot of folks in the church. Uh, that's on page 898. Amen? Daniel, it says here, y'all know the story about Daniel? And Daniel was a uh, captive and, <coughs> excuse me, and Daniel, it says in chapter 1, verse 8, it says, but Daniel purposed in his heart. That's what I want y'all to see. In other words, Daniel took a stand. He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, the next verse says that God brought him favor. That's what I want y'all to see. Daniel had a choice to make. He could do what he had been taught as a, as a little boy. There were certain things that the Jews ate and certain things they did not eat. And Daniel could choose that he was going to continue to live his life and do what God had, what he had been taught by the Word of God, or he could just go the way of the world. It would be easy. I mean, my goodness, they were bringing steaks from their left and right, pork chops and all that. It'd been real easy. So, well, you know, God don't want me to starve. Amen. Give me one of them pork chops. He didn't do that. Daniel purposed in his heart. He took a stand in what he believed. He wouldn't defile himself. And if you know the story, uh, Daniel does what, what he told him he was going to do. And he eats these beans and lentils. And, and he eats, uh, he eats this, all this stuff that he knows he's supposed to eat for 10 days. He's doing better than everybody else. Thank you, brother. He's doing, <coughs> he's doing better than the rest of them. And it says that his face was fatter and he looked better and he, he was doing great. So it defied what the world thought would be best. Amen. And yet he took a stand for what he believed. 
But if you keep reading about Daniel, you know that Daniel was already doing some things before he got to that point. That's why our, our Sunday school lesson was so good this morning, talking about prayer. We need to pray, and we need to pray. I, I think it's good if you pray every morning early before you get your day going, but we need to pray every day. It needs to be a part of our life. Don't wait until the world's falling apart and you don't know what to do. You need to already have that relationship with the Lord. You need to already have that established with Him. And <clears throat> Daniel was doing these things already. <clears throat> he purposed in his heart. Matter of fact, I was talking about in Exodus, <clears throat> Exodus 30, chapter 34, I believe it is. But, but God told the people to not, not make any covenant with the world. Not make a covenant with those other people. Just, just stick with him. And why, that's why Jesus said we'd be a peculiar people, amen? If we're going to do what God's called us to do, we're going to do it God's way, we're going to be a peculiar people. So I want you to understand that Daniel, <clears throat> still in his convictions, he ate vegetables, and he took a chance on missing a good job with our conviction, amen? And that's what we think about well, I don't want to do that. I mean, I need this job. That's why it's so important you make up your mind if you're going to trust God Almighty or you're going to trust the government. Amen? Right. When it gets right down to it, folks, what are we going to do? I know I've had people say things to me uh, about the trucking business. <clears throat> and I've tried to talk to some drivers about it. And they're whining, driving, and complaining. If you don't know truck drivers, then they're really good at that. Okay? Whine, drive, and complain about everything. Just the way it is. There's lots of whine, drive, and complain about it. But whenever you're trusting in the Lord, I had somebody ask me the other day because we don't have a trailer anymore. We don't haul anything. We just move trailers. I don't want to work real hard anymore. We picked up a couple of trailers the other day and I had to chain them down. The Lord didn't like to kill them. I hadn't done that in a long time. He used to do it every day. I thought I never would get that done. Matter of fact, I just tell you this real quick. I used to haul logs. I haul lots of stuff on the flatbed step decks. And I used to get the chain and kind of get them all up and I would throw them. Let me tell you what I did after about the third time. I got me a tennis ball, poked me a hole in the little shrine to throw that tennis ball over time on the chain. I pulled it over. <laughs> Amen. I'm getting older. I'm getting a little smarter too. Amen. And that's just the way it is. Things change when you're a little older. Amen. So I know how difficult it is and the price of things and all that stuff. But I pray. Almost every day, even this morning. I'm not even going anywhere yet to the mall. I'm going to Wisconsin tomorrow. But I, but I asked the Lord, Lord, be my dispatcher. Give me the, the trailer to move us. All I do is move trailers. Somebody buys a new trailer and I take it to them. And it gets me to where I need to go for the next meeting. Uh, like I got to be in uh, uh, Alabama at the end of the month for a couple of days. So I'll get with something to go there. Then I go to a different chapels every weekend. Every weekend we're somewhere. And I just ask the Lord to give me the load that I need to get me where I need to be that will pay what I need to get there. Now, I'm, I'm not getting filthy rich, but I'm not trying to get filthy rich. I just want to get over there so I can preach. Amen? And, and, and so my mindset is different because I'm not looking at how high the, the fuel price is. Listen, if fuel stays at $7, 8 $10 a gallon, and the Lord wants me to keep doing this, and he's going to have to start paying me you know, $40, $50 a mile, whatever it takes, amen. So I just want to encourage you that we make up our mind that we're going to trust the Lord in, in the midst of these things and hold our standards high. And that's what happens. We, we lose faith and we, we start to waver when things get tough. And I, and I pray every day, Lord, help me not to do that. This is one of the things that happens, you know, because we don't hold our standards high, Sometimes we're not even faithful to come to church, you know. We'll, uh, I talk to guys, and, and it's a little different because these guys are gone two or three weeks at a time. But I talk to a lot of guys, and they'll, you know, they can say, Oh, how I love Jesus. Then I ask them, I said, Well, uh, where do you go to church at? Well, uh, and they're trying to think of where mama goes to church, I think. And, well, I don't really go to church that much. I said, well, why well, you don't you know go home? Well, yeah, I ain't gonna go home in two weeks. I said, you go home on the weekend? Yeah. I said, don't go to church. Well, so Hebrews 10 25 is still in there. It says, for Satan not to send him himself to yeah. Amen. 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 That changed. So that's that's the kind of things I'm talking about. If you're gonna if you're gonna practice the word of God, it's one thing to say you believe the word of God. Not a lot of people tell you that. And I'm convinced most of them don't know what's in here. Don't have a clue what's in here when they say that. 
because some of them are doing things exactly contrary to the word of God. And they don't know what it says. And so it's important that we make up our mind now that we're going to take a stand. And listen, I believe if we don't take a stand right now while we have a chance, we're going to lose what we do this week. It's, it's just that close to happen. Uh, there's things happening right now. I could go on and on about some things that's happened. We've had to move some chapels from some places uh, for some big truck stops because they don't want us there anymore. And what, what can we do? We don't own the property. We just got a, a trailer sitting there. And he tells us to move. We've got to move. Even though I wasn't happy about it, I, I tried to stop it. Different things have happened. A lot of work goes into that. Because the world that we live in today, it's real. And there are people that just don't like the things of God. All there is to it. So I just want to encourage you. We have a mind made up. Since we're in Daniel, turn over to chapter 3 real quick. Because this is one thing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in chapter 3. Chapter 3, it says, uh, and I know y'all probably know these verses, but I'm just going to remind you of what it says here. Uh, let me find it real quick. It's Daniel chapter 3. Uh, verse 16, which says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Now, if you know, he's told y'all got to y'all got to jump up and down whenever I play my music and praise me and all that stuff. And they said, <clears throat> we ain't got to pray about this. That's what they were saying. We ain't got to pray about it. We ain't got to think about it. We're not doing it. And I'm telling you folks, it's, it's a very, what they're saying was a very dogmatic thing to say. They, they got their mind made up. And this is where Christians stumble so much because they don't have their mind made up. Only thing they know for sure they want to do is go to heaven when they die. The rest of that stuff, they don't have their mind made up about. But we need to have our mind made up. We need to have our mind made up. We need to teach our children, our grandchildren, this is the truth. This is what we're going to do. And even when our own family makes fun of us, we need to have our mind made up. This is what I'm going to do. Why? Because that's what God says to do. And that's what they did right here. They, they didn't do that. It said, verse 17, if it's God will or if it's not, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But notice that. You know, I tell, tell guards all the time, don't just study the buts, the B U T's in the Bible, because but changes everything. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life, changes everything. Amen. And right here, they're saying right here that God can deliver us if he wants to, but if not, be it known to thee. O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou set up. And folks, this is hard. This is hard. Listen, we've been praying for our grandson, and we're praying that God would heal him. I remember praying for Mark, and when God didn't heal her, he didn't answer my prayer the way I wanted it. Did that make him not God? No. He's still God. That's what Daniel was saying. That's what Shadow Bishop and Bingo was saying. Listen, we're going to trust God. God can do this. God can take care of us, but if he chooses not to, he's still king of kings and lord of lords. Amen? Amen. And we've got to have our mind made up that we're going to trust him no matter what. And you know, we, we don't, uh, we follow Jesus Christ of Matthew. Now listen, I talk to people, I love to get to talk to other uh, faiths, other, not, not that I'm making, I'm talking about other religions. Uh, Buddhist or Muslim or something like that. And there's a, a lot of that out there in the Turkey world. A lot of them. And <clears throat> all of them know about Jesus. Some of them have different variations of what they believe about Jesus. Good teacher, great prophet, uh, this, that, and the other. But when you say Jesus Christ is the son of the most high God, he is the son of the living God, and you're not nailed down, put your finger right here. Now, either you believe that, when you're telling somebody that, or you're wrong. And they don't like it whenever you're saying, I'm not saying you're wrong, but when I'm saying it that way, they know I'm saying you're wrong. Don't like that. I'm not changing that. I could change if I wanted to, amen? He is king, no matter what. So we need to have our mind made up about some things, and, and, and we need to have our mind made up that this is the word of God, I believe it, I'm going to trust it. This is people have gave their lives for this Bible that we have right now today. We you want to read some of those things that happened to people that was trying to have these Bibles printed so that we could read them. All through, I mean, all the things that happened to Paul all the way back, all the way back to those days. Many, many people have lost their lives for the Word of God. And yet we've got them laying all over a house sometimes 
Lay right there on the coffee table in the living room and never get picked up. We take it for granted so much. And there's so much in there. That's why I tell people all the time, man, read Proverbs. Just read. If you don't do anything, but read Proverbs. Read the Proverbs. Because there's so much practical living in Proverbs. I mean, just this things to do with your, your finances. I mean, the matter of fact, it says in Proverbs, I can't think of maybe in chapter 29. It says in Proverbs that there is a time when you just need to go deer hunting. Now, ladies, y'all look it up. It's in there. So there's a time, it says, whenever you're with that contentious woman, you're just better off to go to the wilderness. Amen? It's in there. That's why you need to know the Bible. That way you can tell you why. I'm just going to do what God told me to do. What did he tell you to do? I'm going to deer hunt. Amen? So you need to know that scripture, find it real quick, and then go out the door. Okay? We need to know the word of God. And, and so I want to encourage you that we keep looking to Jesus often finish for our faith, keep looking to the Word of God, trust Him, period, hold your standards high. And, uh, you know, we can, we can do what the Bible says we can do if we would just put it, put that faith into action. That, uh, I mentioned that verse there, often finish for our faith is in Hebrews somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> here's the problem with that. Hebrews chapter 12 is where it's at. <clears throat> it says that because if you're going to keep looking at Jesus, you're going to keep looking at him, stay focused on Jesus Christ. No matter what the world's doing, we're going to stay focused on him. But here's the problem. That verse, Hebrews 12 and 1, it says, Wherefore see, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily to set us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It, 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 it's, it's to run this, this race with endurance and the things that bog us down, we just set aside. It's kind of like, it's kind of like being on a diet. I could be on a diet and lose weight. I could. But I don't want to. That's my problem. Amen? And it's the same way with sin in our life. We could do this, that, and the other, but there's sin. There's some things that we dislike. We don't want to turn it loose. And the Bible tells us, look, turn it loose of those things. Those things are weighing you down, slowing you down, causing you not to serve the Lord. And there could be many things. It can be sometimes because we're so deep in debt, we can't serve the Lord with what he's blessed us with. Amen? That's where a lot of folks are at in America today. But he's saying whatever that is, lay it to the side and trust the Lord. And he goes on to say here, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. That was pretty hard, amen? Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus... Didn't you remember what, what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane? That's one of the things that was so so wonderful about getting to go to Israel was to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And those big old olive trees that's been there, for, they say some of them been there since the time of Jesus. They're, they're old. But it was just neat to be there. But if you remember that story, Jesus said, Father, if it, it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but I be done. See, that's hard. That's really hard to do that. But that's what he's saying. If we stay focused on Jesus Christ, let loose of the things of the world, hold our standards high based on the word of God. If you don't know it, in the Old Testament, they had a standard bearer. And basically, he's holding the flag, the banner, and they're marching forward in the, in the army, in the, in the war. They're going this direction. And the standard bearer had this flag way by us. Everybody knew which way it would go. And if he turned and ran, everybody else turned and ran too. That's, that's, that's why he was the standard bearer. So it mattered. Matter of fact, I think it was maybe that uh, it's been so long ago. I think it was that movie Mel Gibson made. It was about three days long, and he was in a battle. I can't remember what the movie was, but I remember there was a movie with him in. And that's what he did. But he grabbed that flag, he grabbed that standard, and he kept running forward. And all the armies that was turning, and the men were leaving and going the other way about to retreat. When they saw the flag going towards the enemy, they all turned and ran towards the flag. And they won the battle. Too many times, man, we, we get scared. We let the devil buffalo us into things and we get scared and we quit. And we miss out on blessings. I think we miss out on seeing God work miracles in our life because we get almost to the brink of the hill and it's, it's, it, we're tired. It's, it's a long climb and we quit. We never see what's on the other side, what God is going to do. I want to encourage you that we would keep looking to Jesus. <laughs> Basically, what we need to do in America in the American church is we need to make our our walk match up with our talk. Amen. 
And if we say we believe these things, then we should act like we believe these things. We should live that way. Amen. And and so I just want to encourage in this in this. I believe we're in the last days. So many people are watching us, and this is so important. It's not like, I mean, it's not like church is normal if you want to use that term. Things are different. Things are happening. I'm telling you, things are happening so fast on a global scheme. I'm talking about. Things should happen and change so fast. We might not have much time to witness to our friends, co-workers, relatives. We need to take this thing serious. Amen. Lord's coming back. Amen. And by the way, he's coming back as the lion that we're trying to do. Amen. He's coming back to take over, not make suggestions. And so it's going to be a real deal. And we need to be telling people and, and, and sharing it with them. You know, I, I want to be able to, I want to be able to help people. And, and we got so many people who say they love the Lord. Sweet saints say they want to be like Jesus. And they forget Jesus didn't have any material possessions. And again, they're eyeball deep in debt with stuff. What do we do all the time? We want to build bigger barns. I'm guilty of this. We got a shed where we live at, and I wanted to be able to pull that truck up on it to work on it. It's not tall enough. And I told Nancy, I just need to build a bigger barn. And I'll tell you, when I said that, it hit me right there. I mean, no, I need to build a bigger barn. Just do what I've always done. That on the ground agrees. Amen. But that's what we do. We want to build a bigger barn because we got more stuff to put in there. And we just keep going down that side. And you know what? The world looks at us, and we're no different than them. I'm not against this side of the thing. Don't get me wrong, folks. But I'm saying when, when we're so consumed, we got to have everything that we hardly ever use. I don't know people has got boats and campers and motorhomes. They ain't done anything with them in two or three years. It's sitting there. That will not be that way for us. We need to live this life in a way where we're showing the world that we believe Jesus is coming back. If we're going to do this thing, like it says here in Hebrews 12, we're going to have to lay aside those weights, those sins, and uh, stay focused on Jesus Christ. Lay aside those things. You know the story about Peter and Peter walking on the water. And we all make fun of Peter because Peter saw, but he did walk on water. Amen. I ain't never done that. You ought to try it sometime. He walked on water, but he was focused on Jesus Christ when he was walking on water. And I do believe we serve the, the, the same God that Peter served. Amen. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And there's things that I believe God would do in our lives if we would just let him be God in our lives. So I want to encourage you tonight that, that as people, when I say righteous, I don't mean self-righteous. A righteous person is a person who is right with God because of belief in Jesus Christ and trusting in what Jesus Christ has done. That's what makes you righteous. We are saints, amen, because of what Jesus has done for us. So if we're going to take a stand and do what's right no matter what, that's what the righteous can do. Take a stand, do what's right no matter what. Pray, and I want to encourage you. It was a great Sunday school lesson this morning. I've thought about it several times today. We need to pray every day. We need to pray first thing in the morning. We need to be thankful. Be thankful for what we have. God has blessed us. And all of us, we can go around here and we can tell all of our sad stories and things that didn't go the way we wanted to go and things we've lost and we've lost money in this business deal and that business deal and this happened and that wreck and that person died. We can all talk about those things. But I'm telling you, we got so much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for. And I want to encourage you every day to thank the Lord for it. Look to Jesus. Stay in the Word and not the world. Amen. I want to leave you with this, this thought. I read a story about this, this young lady who came from a very, very wealthy family. <clears throat> and uh, they sent her off to college. And this was sometime back in the, I believe it was in the late 20s. <clears throat> if I remember correctly, right along after the roaring 20s. And her family was very, very wealthy. And uh, not church for people at all. And she went off to college and uh, wound up getting saved. And it was so real in her life that her folks would see such a great difference in her life. 
and they was concerned about her going in the wrong direction and not going. I mean, you know, in this day and age, where they lived, for a woman to have the ability to go to college, get a great education, and all those things that she could do, they felt like she was going to throw away her future with all this religious stuff. <clears throat> this had rocked on for about a year, and she came home for break. Uh, basically, her dad and her mom gave her an ultimatum and said, look, you, you've got to make up your mind. Put this stuff to the side. You've got to get serious about your schoolwork, what she was doing. But And you've got to stay focused on this and, and, and forget about this pie in the sky stuff. And uh, <clears throat> basically, he told her, said, tomorrow, you, you've got to give us an answer for what you're going to do, what direction you're going to go. And what he was going to do, he threatened to take her money away for college. And he wasn't going to support her financially. If you're going to follow Jesus and you trust Jesus, you know, you just go on and follow him. Let him take care of you and your dad. <clears throat> kind of a hard spot to put a 19, 20-year-old girl, amen? But the next day, the next morning, actually, whenever he came downstairs, she was sitting at the piano. And her daddy was coming up, and she sees her daddy coming, and she started playing the piano. And she started singing that song, I Have Decided. To follow Jesus. No none go with me. I have decided to follow Jesus. And she started singing that song. And she didn't even get it finished when I was reading about it. And her daddy sat down beside her on the piano bench and said, Whatever you got, I'll do. But she had a decision, a choice to make. And I'm telling you, there's no doubt in my mind that the devil was working very hard at that moment to get her, wouldn't change where she was going for eternity, but it would, it would mess up her witness so bad it would probably have sent her folks to hell. It was a spiritual battle going on. And folks, that's what we get so many times in a spiritual battle, and we drop the ball because it got a little bit hard. I want to encourage you folks, it's going to get hard, whether you realize it or not. 2022, 23, 24, I don't know how things are going to go in our politics in America. We're doing some crazy, crazy things in America right now. It's going to get hard. It's going to get really hard unless you just go with the flow. Anybody go with the flow, amen? Yeah. But when you stand for righteousness and you stand for what's right with Jesus, it's going to get hard. But you know we're going to win if we'll just stay the course, stay focused on Jesus Christ. I want to ask you tonight that you would just decide in your heart, I'm going to trust the Lord. Maybe there's things happen that you, you wonder about, and you waver on things, and you get back and forth. Let me just say, just get to settle. God is right. God is for you. God will bless you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Trust him all that stuff. Remember what I said this morning? Forsaking all, I trust him. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord in word of prayer. And uh, by the fact, brother, why don't you leave us in that song? I know it's in that old book. Uh, I have decided to follow Jesus. Page 149. 149. Let's sing that song.